much racing coming your way as the cars take to the tracks starting in this is group 10 a 12 minute plus one lap qualifying race so there is a margin of top end performances and times here because we're looking at distinctly different cars but you will definitely enjoy watching these cars at speed three as they come down the front straightaway starter again looking him over giving him plenty of time no green yet we're still watching we've got a green and away they go Hit it for one. And I think you're going to see, oh, we've got a, that, it looks like the stock car that was on the front row has dropped way back. I think he may have missed the gears. That's what I was thinking. That's what it looked like. Because he got back into it, he's back to speed. So this again is a 12 minute plus one race. And we'd like to remind group, the Formula Junior group, you need to bring your cars up right now. We want to get you out just as quickly as possible. For Formula Junior, bring your cars to the grid. Thank you. And I think you can see Kirk Bennett in that uh, shadow. That's a uh, late Can-Am car. Those cars, those cars uh, dominated uh, the Can-Am after the McLarens and the uh, Porsches had left. Uh, won the series with George Fulmer and not sure who the uh, second driver was. I, I think at one race it was Jarier, but I'm not positive. And we're looking as the field heads down toward the hairpin. We've got that on our monitor here. And we'll let you know how it shapes up. Keep an eye on that Decon Monza. That's that white and green car. Uh, I've driven one of those and they are fabulous race cars. It was the very first silhouette two-frame car out of anybody. Uh, built for a new class All-American GT in IMSA. Uh, great car to drive, very forgiving, very easy to drive. Uh, back uh, through the back door, of course, by Chevrolet, and he just tried an inside move at the hairpin that did not work. That will cause uh, cost him at least five, six car lengths. Yeah, that All-American GT car was sort of the outgrowth of John Bishop, who uh, really fine-tuned at racing in IMSA, saw the Porsche dominance just going on year after year and decided they needed something from the American side to make it competitive. Well, and all the great races are about contrast. Yeah. Uh, and putting a car with power against a car with handling is the best kind of contrast you can have. And the guy that built those cars was Horst Quack, uh, and they were designed by Lee Dykstra, and that's the D-Con of Decon. Oh, and look at that number 42 Corvette. I think that's Peter Clute. Uh, and it he's is. ahead of the fastest stock car. He's running second now. A Corvette and a Monte Carlo. You wouldn't see that very often. That's a, it yeah. sounds like a Chevy show. <laughs> it, it sure does. And then the shadow looks so out of place in this entire field. It looks like it doesn't belong there. Well, it belongs at the front of it, especially no, for Bennett definitely, driving. Yeah. Uh, Kirk and his dad, Bud Bennett, uh, run a shop that restores and prepares Can-Am cars, Formula 5000, all the big stuff. And Kirk's been driving big stuff since he started. I think he even did a little sprint car racing. Very, very accomplished driver. Uh, but Still pretty young, which really makes me angry. <laughs> Bennett's a full eight seconds faster than the second fastest car. A 222 for a Bennett, a 230 for Clute, who leads in a pra. The SE3 leader is O'Connell running third overall at a 231-3. And he's got a good battle going on between O'Connell and...